Welcome back to Echo Ridge and another episode here in our Maximum Difficulty Achievement Run. Warning, this episode is going to pack a punch. Well, at least directed towards me because we have a lot to do. All right, here's the sequence of events. We need to break into these natural gas geysers, quite frankly, because we need to start running natural gas generators. The natural gas generators will help keep these duplicates off the wheels. And I'm hoping once we are able to do that, it's going to alleviate more labor to be able to concentrate on everything else that needs to be done on this planetoid. Because right now, we're spending a vast majority of our time growing our food and running on the wheels. Not only for the main part of our colony, which is supplying things like our sublimation station, the sludge press, the water sieve for the bathrooms, our wonderful little phone. Hey guys, the phone's ringing. Is anybody going to pick that up? And then on this side of the base, we have another circuit that's running the rock crusher that we're using to make sand occasionally, a massage table, this liquid filter that's helping make sure that all of our crops are only getting the polluted water that they want. And this isn't even considering the massive amount of future problems that this colony is going to have. Like, I get it, it has a lot of water right now. Whether we're looking at all these pockets here in and around the map to include all of this salt water up here, in fact, the sooner we start desalinating that salt water, the sooner we'll be able to get a steady supply of salt. And there goes sand. But the colony's also built on a frozen core. And I don't think we would ever be able to use this amount of water. So while it may not be infinitely sustainable, I think it's just going to have to do. Now, it's important because that water has to do a few different things. First, it has to keep our duplicates fed for a little while. And second, Eventually, we're going to have to get rid of the sublimation station that relies on the polluted dirt to provide us oxygen. But you may remember when we hired Colonel Sanders that they also have an interest in critter ranching. So I think we're going to help ourselves out by at least putting all the slug plugs in one place. Now, I've seen plenty of comments that say, why aren't we using these plug slugs for power? And there's a couple of reasons. The last I did a study on the plug slugs, as soon as they became hungry, they stopped providing power, or they at least start providing a lot less power. I know from the rip though, they're going to be able to provide 400 watts, I just don't think it's maintainable. But we're going to find out. We're also digging and building our ladder shaft that's going to the space biome here, because we're eventually going to need a spot to at least be able to guide in maybe some future rockets, or any interplanetary launcher loads. Because right now I have this launcher loaded up with one ton of steel, and we have one ton of plastic ready to go. But I don't want to fire it off yet until I can put down one of these nifty targeting beacons. Speaking of which, we'll go ahead and put this one down here. And you may also notice the graphic that's appearing above it. There's a few other buildings that are now changed thanks to the June quality of life update by Clay. And I don't think I've said it enough, even though I am a fanboy of Clay. But they do a phenomenal job of supporting their games. So a tip of the hat again to the devs for this wonderful update. Except you broke my telescope. As you can see, based off their new graphic, the way they changed their enclosed telescopes, this one no longer has line of sight. So I'm going to try to trim off a few of these tiles here and find out what the minimum area that this telescope needs to regain its line of sight. Because right now it says there is a 0% efficiency. And in case you haven't read the update, next time you launch your game, they also do a great job of putting a little button there that you can click it, it opens your web browser, and you can read all about it. Also, another episode, more rocket flights. The ESS Slow and Steady just returned and gave us some Moldavite. We will take that to our artifacts. Make sure we're loaded up with a bunch of wonderful rad pills. We still have 57,000 calories worth of berry sludge in here. So yeah, sorry angry, back to space with you. Another smaller update is we've managed to find some Pintro eggs. So we dropped them off into this automatic dispenser. And as soon as this poke shell spawn grows up, we're going to end up taming it. Granted, we still have a long way to go for the complete list of critters required for Critter Whisperer. But grabbing a few of the poke shell eggs from here doesn't hurt. Another smaller update is we've updated our rad bolt production again. Now our refrigerator holds 100 kilos worth of basic rad pills. So Majin Lord works a lot on the rad pills, but as soon as a rocket comes back, we just take 30 from this fridge and drop it off in the rocket. After that, it's just a matter of waiting for this gas cargo canister to fill up. And then we just pick a new destination. I think this time we're going to go right about here. 
make sure that rad bolt engine is completely full before we launch it, and then wish Angry Forest a safe and happy trip. Just remember, you better come back with more astronomical data. Speaking of which, we did actually find some good news in the last episode in our exploration. I just didn't even realize it until recently. This is our gilded asteroid field, and there it is. The 10% beautiful fullerene, not to mention the fact it also has 25% gold. Now that gets us two thirds of the way there. Now all we need is a little bit of petroleum, and then we have ourselves super coolant at probably about cycle 1300. A lot of folks have been saying, why don't you just use graphite, add some sulfur and aluminum to make fullerene? And we could, but keep in mind, the only place that I know that has graphite on the star map is on the water planetoid. And that planetoid is pretty far away with a range of 11. So at a minimum, we would need a total range of at least 22. I'd be more comfortable with say 24 for the takeoff and landing, but we could get graphite there. But, and you know there's always a but, that doesn't get us any closer to super coolant. Because yes, we'll have fullerene, because we have sulfur and some aluminum. I'm sure we could scrounge up some on the star map. But then we still need petroleum. So no matter what, we have to find a source of oil. Speaking of rockets, the ESS Diggy Diggy rocket is back and we've got another artifact. This time it is the shield generator. We also have all of our wonderful goodies that we will sweep out of the rocket. And then as soon as that is done, we're gonna send this rocket right back out. Except we're gonna push our limits and try to make it all the way to the Gilded Asteroid Field. If I include Toxedo in the count and say starting from here and go across and say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It looks like I can get there and back with a range of 20. I'm gonna let you know how that goes about mid-flight. But if not, we'll at least be able to get almost back and then we can just, you know, abandon the ship. Speaking of the rocket front though, we have a small issue. As you can see, Angry is not having a good time. To be sure, they are out in the middle of nowhere and heading towards a couple of unknown objects to be able to scan them. Unfortunately, this cot still thinks it's grounded. I can try forcing them to it, but they're still not willing to go sleep there. And this has caused Angry quite a bit of stress, which I think we'd all be if you ended up resorting to sleeping by the wall toilet. So I'm sure this is a bug that was introduced in the most recent quality of life update, but I'm going to try to work around it. I'm going to start by deconstructing it and rebuilding it. Hang in there, buddy. You're gonna be okay. So without further ado, fare thee well to Whiskey T Fox and the ESS Diggy Diggy Rocket. I hope you have your space diver's license. Is it me, or is this animation a little different? I don't quite remember the telescope swinging side to side like that. Let me know if you've seen this before in the comments below. In other news, when Angry Forest completed the cot, it looks like that may have solved the issue because it says the access is not restricted. We'll see if Angry gets a better night's sleep tonight. Over on Rikazan, we've done a couple of, well, probably not smart things. I've unearthed both of these volcanoes here. One's a cobalt volcano and the other's an aluminum volcano, or aluminium, for those of you on the other side of the pond. And you may think that this is not a good idea, and you'd probably be mostly right, except the cobalt and the aluminum are gonna splash down into this salt water and quickly cool off. And the more of it that erupts, for instance, here's a stack right here, it's gonna keep averaging with the temperature in that stack. So as this cobalt cools down in the water, well, all the existing cobalt that's coming out of that volcano isn't gonna raise the temperature by too much because, well, it's such a small amount that's coming out at each time. Now this one's in the perfect position because the water level is low enough to where the cobalt volcano will still erupt. This one may not be. We're going to be able to do a couple of things to that. For instance, maybe by digging that out and digging one of these out might lower it enough, but we'll see. At the minimum though, I don't want to lose how much water is sitting on top of this volcano. But one of the reasons why we're doing that is because we're going to get these plug slugs online finally. I've got a rudimentary stable here. That'll be good enough for now. We'll put a critter drop off there. We'll add our grooming station. We have our wire here. So hopefully the plug slugs can do a decent job of keeping those batteries going. I'm also dropping a little bit of this water here 
down here so it can be repumped. Don't mind the suffocation message, I'm sure it's okay. Into this area here. I want to make sure we have at least one saltwater pool, but this saltwater pool is going to be useful just to keep all this bleach stone from going off. Now to start off, we're going to be feeding the plug slugs cobalt ore. For one, we have 70 tons of it, but for two, we also know it's cold. I don't want to bring even 120 degree refined cobalt into this stable, otherwise it'll just make a huge mess. An update on the Diggy Diggy rocket, it looks like we're going to be fine. We are one tile away. We still have a range of 11 tiles, which means the rocket will have enough fuel to fly all the way back to Tuxedo. Over on the slow and steady, the two objects we have identified is an organic mass field, nothing special there, and a wrecked space shuttle. Back on Rigazon, it looks like I overreached on the size of this stable, but this isn't too big of a deal. We'll just fill in some tiles. What, 17 of them? Back on Tuxedo, we are ready to launch our first interplanetary launcher payload, I think? I'm not sure. Oh, look, they added the little graphics for the launcher, too. Very neat. We will target Rikazon. Make sure the minimum launch mass is 200 kilos, so we get every little bit that we want, and then just flip the switch on. Oh, wasn't that glorious? So now that I have this enabled to be launched, anytime the launcher needs some rad bolts, our rad bolt delivery system will grab them until it's full, and then which it'll turn off this rad bolt reflector and send all the rest to our diamond press. And now that I've loaded up the next material, in this case it's plastic, I'm going to uncheck plastic from the storage bin and then just check it on the conveyor loader that only the auto sweeper is allowed to use. All that plastic will be delivered to the interplanetary launcher and then fired rather quickly. Like it's gonna reach Rikazon in 78 seconds. Why can't we use this technology on our rockets? Or maybe a dupe delivery system. At the minimum, maybe a robot delivery system, huh? Imagine a rover in some sort of protective vehicle slamming down right here at this targeting beacon and then unwrapping themselves and getting to work. Absolutely wonderful. Now, with us getting payloads here, we could go through the process of adding a payload opener, but I don't think it's going to be quite necessary. Normally, I only use the payload opener when I'm going to automate the system using some auto sweepers. Auto sweepers would pick it up, it'd get put into the payload opener, and then delivered wherever we wanted to. For now, though, I think it's just as easy to click empty storage. Absolutely. Something to note is this steel is pretty warm. But we'll leave it up here, not a big deal, until such time that we need it, and then we'll put it to good use. I suppose while we're sitting here, we can put the payload opener here, at least to give us some future-proof options. It might even be good to have all those materials go by rail and get dropped off into the water to sort of cool off before our duplicates use it. Our first sneaky slug plug decided to come down here. Well, that's not going to do because since this plug slug is tamed, it would be providing us 1600 watts. So we'll make sure we have a line in the water. I'm sure it'll be fine. I don't know why that's a thing, but I'm sure it has all the protective sheathing that electrical wires need when they're submerged in water. Please don't do this at home. The way our ranch system works is whenever the plug slug eats, it's going to deposit some hydrogen in the atmosphere. When it does, it's going to make its way up. Now, because the manual airlock is in place, the only time this area opens to the outside environment is when the duplicate comes through to either refill the critter feeder and storage bin or ranch the critter. The point of all that is to try to make sure all the hydrogen is possible floats up to this gas pump. This gas pump is activated by this gas element sensor and only when hydrogen has been sitting in it for 200 seconds according to this filter gate. So the gas element sensor detects hydrogen it waits until it's sitting in hydrogen for 200 seconds, turns the gas pump on, with the idea being it's going to be pretty much fully covered in hydrogen at that time, and then sent all the way down to this hydrogen generator. There is a just-in-case filter here, in which case all the hydrogen is going to go over to the hydrogen generator, and anything else is going to get dumped out into the atmosphere. Using our newfound plastic, we put a high pressure gas vent just to make sure the gas filter could empty all of its non-hydrogen things. This hydrogen generator is assisting with the power requirements for this network here. The plug slug is the one providing all the power for our colony's primary line. And so far, this system has worked out pretty well. 
We even have a little bit of hydrogen backed up in the lines. And this wheel has only been used 5% of the time in the last five cycles. Not too shabby. This wheel's still working on it. Last five cycles is 47%. Last cycle was 27 and this cycle is zero. We could add a few more batteries, but I'm not trying to do all that yet until I have a place to dump all the heat. Because as always in any of your colonies, heat is going to be an issue. Right now our bog buckets are only sitting around 25 degrees and I'd prefer it stays that way because otherwise they'll stifle at 30. One last addition is I've decided to put an airflow tile in here. It was getting a little dicey in here as far as oxygen goes and that wouldn't be good for a couple of reasons. First of all, because the duplicate who's ranching or dropping things off would have a problem breathing in here. But second of all, if a plug slug is sitting in unbreathable gas for too long, their chances of laying a smog slug egg continue to go up. And well, I just prefer that didn't happen. We also have our incubator here, which means it's probably time to set up some omelets. Because remember, you can't drown a plug slug. So you could drop all the eggs off and do it manually, or you can put them into temperatures that are too hot or too cold, but Putting an egg cracker somewhere is just a little bit easier for this stage of the game. The question being is where am I going to put it? I suppose right here? Yeah, that looks good. I'm also going to adjust this wheel from 50% down to something like 20%. That way the duplicates won't be tempted to run on it unless the batteries get really low. That way it'll give our plug slugs plenty of opportunity to charge those batteries during the night so the duplicates don't have to worry about it during the day. Other small updates on Rikazon is we've, well, completely bored out the bottom part of the map. Save this beautiful collection of metal, but we'll get to that in the future. So next episode, I'm really not going to have an excuse to set up a real power plant with these natural gas geysers. Especially considering, with all the digging done, and some of the power requirements taken off of dupe labor, occasionally these dupes are starting to hit idle. Which is exactly what I like to see before starting a new project. By the way, the Diggy Diggy Rocket made it home A-OK. -okay. They brought with them a Grub Grub statue and two tons of beautiful fullerene. Way to go, Whiskey. Great job. So as the normal, we're going to bring all of our rare resources into a storage bin right next to our molecular forge. And now all we have to worry about is, well, where are we going to get the petroleum? There is no oil on our connected planetoid, to my everlasting fury. There's none on Rikas on here. There's none on Fergoni. Here's Toxedo where we're from. About the closest location we have is Idololan. And if you remember this dumpster fire from before, I think this is where we came to get a thimble reed a very, very long time ago. I mean, we could set up another colony here, but we would need another four or five duplicates to be able to do all the work just to tap into these oil reserves. Not to mention the fact the only source of water on this planetoid is a cool steam vent. That's not enough water to be able to run a couple of oil reservoirs. And I know what you're thinking. Well, Echo, just launch the water from Tuxedo over to Isle Lonan. Use that water in order to be able to get access to the oil and then launch the oil back to Tuxedo. Yeah, I get that that would work. But would you do that in your game? Doesn't that sound like a pain in the nose? Yeah, I think it does. The other idea I had was coming over here to this oil asteroid field, which seems to be the closest one. Unfortunately, it is 11 tiles away, which means we would need a different rocket program. My only hope is maybe this is another oily asteroid field? I don't know how many they're supposed to spawn on the star map. But this has 11% crude oil. We could grab all of it, turn it into petroleum the old-fashioned way, and that would solve that problem, at least for a little while. On the good news front, our exploration rocket was out here doing a little bit of exploration and they discovered another planetoid. And lucky for us, our exploration rocket has a rover. Now granted, this place isn't very exciting because it's the Shovel planet, but at least rover's gonna have fun with it. For those of you curious, the Shovel planet just keeps getting more regolith, iron, and ice by meteor. It has a cool steam vent, a steam vent, and more cold filtration medium than you would ever need. So we're just gonna put Rover to work, futilely trying to dig over here to the mafic rock so one day we'd actually have something we could build with. In preparation for those future projects, I'm gonna take all this water and dump it over there and keep working on the systems in place here. Because as much as I like this cute little village feel for the colony, I don't think it's something that can stay permanent. A Little bit of a hodgepodge video, but I promise you we got a lot done. 
Let me know in the comments below what you thought of it and what you think we should do about the oil dilemma. So until next time, much love, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.